brought together here on this planet that it's a tug of war of how we're going to go forward. You that's know, what forward is. Yeah, Pardon me? That's one of the big things we need to do is to be sure that all these different groups of things, they have a portion, a small piece of, of, of the pie, if you will, and if we can help bring them all together to where we're all making the same approach to make homo sapiens sapiens on the planet Earth a ready to advance on into the solar system to meet up with uh, the solar intelligence uh, throughout the whole universe. Yeah. This is going to make a big difference. And the people, and it's, you know, it's been a process that we get to wake up and um, are able to handle it. That was one of the biggest things that during H.G. Wells and the whole story there of um, people panicked and jumped off buildings because they couldn't do it. Now you, you talk to any young people, the young generations, and you say, well, you know, what, what do you think? Are there, are, are there other um, intelligent beings in the universe? Well, of course there is. You know, they... So we've now to a point where it's time that the whole civilization of Homo sapiens on this planet are ready, and those that aren't, they're they're going to have to come right along with us because they won't have any choice. But then it's a matter of, you know, those that are ready, we're ready to move forward. It's time to go. And I'm losing my voice. I'm losing my voice. Yeah, a little bit. Hey, Chrisana, I'd like to ask you something. I've got. I'm looking at Dr. Michael Isala's book, PhD level, uh, called "The U.S. Navy's Secret Space Program," and it says "and Nordic Extraterrestrial Alliance." And on the front are two people. One is a female in a silver suit with blonde, long hair, uh, holding the hand of a gentleman in the U.S. Navy officer uniform. And facing each other. It's a very good looking book. I have not read it, but I want you to know that I relate to both those personages on the front. Both of those could be me, the man and the woman. Now, how would I explain that to somebody like you, that other than how I just did? But I relate to both memes or energy or biologicals, or the because I've been in the U.S. Navy. I've been in this, what they call this, I used to really hate the secret space program because it wasn't, but the way Janet looked at it was, so for years, I didn't like that. But the Nordic, yes, I've always uh, also been a Nordic. So here's the words I use, Nordic, extraterrestrial. I never use secret space, but now I use UFO secret space program, but I use UFO secret space command in a social network. We've got a couple of thousand people in it, but... How do you do that? It's made by Robert Sala. No, Michael Sala and Robert Wood did the forward. And they got together after Bill Tompkins, right? And all of that. But Janet knows both of them. But I'd like to hear what you say. I know what Janet's going to say. They're all me or aspects of me. But how do you feel? If you heard, so this is the craziness I'm trying to keep from happening to me. But I know what I'm trying to do. I just don't know how to get there to help people. Does that make well, sense? Well, it makes perfect sense. And um, what we need to understand is that we you're talking about archetypes, platonic sense, as, as Plato defined an archetype, which is the first of its kind. And so we Very never... Good. Just, I use I, I use tarot I, I, cards for that reason, but yeah, keep going. That's very impressive. Yeah, you got it. Archetypes, but yeah, go on because we've got to learn. That's what Allied Command's about: is learning to talk to different people at different levels, that have different experiences, are different dimensions, or time travelers, or whatever. But all of the above, but to make it make sense, so people like me that have various levels of existence don't feel crazy when we talk to people that want to know more, but we don't know how to. <laughs> Communicate, and that's my one of my gifts. Is uh, supposed to be able to communicate. All right, back to you. Anyway, in 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 terms of the archetypes, we all come from archetypes. We are all are, we are descended from archetypes, the first of a kind. And for us, our archetypes are all off planet, right? We're a young species. And this is a young, actually a young solar system. So 
So everything that we're talking about and we're worried about, the ancestors, the archetypes have already done it in one way or another. So we can either look at them as an example and and as models after which we spin off. And we can say, what can I learn from this? Or we can um, deny it. So what are we talking about here? We're talking about intellectual maturity and um, the well, our own level of... Yeah, so, yeah. We're saying our spiritual our, level as well. Well, it's, it's, it's all of it. It's physical, it's mental, and it's, it's soul. You know, the, mm -hmm. the truth, the soul is the child of the spirit. But, but it's a very important intermediate a step between the mind and the spirit. So it's physical, mental, and soul. And we as a species, if you took each person's level of development, each person on the planet, you took their level of development and you averaged it, then you'd get our planetary average. And it's probably going to be really different than, say, Venus. What is the what what is the average for the those uh, groups on Venus, and and that is that is on all levels, especially the soul and the body. You get those averages, and we are a young species in body and in soul. However, you know the soul develops. I, I, you know, I actually, when, when I said spiritual, I meant soul because that to me is our, our spiritual being, is, is our soul. So that's, I wasn't see, jumping on any particular religious people denomination. People exchange those. Ken, mm -hmm. people Pardon? exchange those inter, intertwined, and I've gotten into many conversations on this radio between spirit and soul. And usually you can't convince people once they classify their soul versus their spirit like me i say all the spirit energy i send down from my over soul it makes up the archetype or the parts or the fractals of my original soul seed that go. was in the gulf or golf but now tommy hawksblood on the other hand does it just in reverse so some people call it their soul comes down right or their spirit but so they're interchangeable, but we, that's one of the problems we have in communication is what does each individual human mean when they say a particular word? We get into a taxonomy, you know, and, yes. and it's very that's important, right. Epist epistemology. So these are things that a lot of people walking around with a high school education don't even think about, that they're not even talking the same language when they're – well, you know, walking around with their pants hung down around their knees and throw <laughs> and rap and this and that and and I'm my, and I'm talking about my grandkids too. That yes. you know, they're talking not thinking those like. <laughs> yeah, so yes. my, they're all right now not wanting to smoke pot and not work and figuring out the best way not to even worry about the man's job or the, working for the government or going to school. They don't even care about the old way. These people don't even they've grown up in the internet and playing games and they don't want to work. So I don't know what we're going to do. I was talking to a 30 year old today checking me out at Dollar Tree for something simple like dog food. And he said he was talking to me and I was like look around to see who he was talking to. I was the only one there and then a man came up behind me in the line. But he said I don't know what we're going to do with these. I'm 30 years old and here I am working here wondering how I'm going to make it what are we going to do 20 years from now? What are the kids going to do? Nobody wants to work anymore. I'm like, that's true. So, I mean, the 30-year-olds are talking about the 19-year-olds <laughs> and so on and so forth. So it's really funny, but at the same time, we're in a serious situation. we got to all, you know, we're communicating. Our communication tonight is important. Can, can I say something about archetypes before we get too far down the line? <laughs> Go for it. Okay. Yeah, I, I was I was sitting here quietly listening because it's a fascinating conversation. But from my understanding, I think this is George Capasso's information, but I could be wrong. I can't remember all the details. But anyway, it's that the uh, it's kind of like we've already done it all as a continuum, as the uh, you know the the the, 
the global, not global, the interplanetary universal system. Everything's been created, right? Nothing can be created or destroyed. So it's all been created, but we're, we're redoing it. That's why we have archetypes. And archetypes have emerged from this group gestalt, which uh, we uh, identify with. So I identify with Nimma, and I know, uh, TJ, you identify with uh, both. And other people identify with the gods. And that's why we have the story in the Enuma Elish where the planets were, um, they had personalities. They were, they were talked about as if they were humans or, or humanoid, right? So, the, uh, so what, uh, what George Cabasillo says is that we started at like at the source point and then we sub parsed went down into like a universe level, a, 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 a galactic level, a solar system level, and now we're coming into a planetary level as human forms that can hold consciousness. But they're all parts of ourself, all the way up to the oneness source. So we have these little subpersonalities, which are the archetype, the levels of physicality, it's a denser material. And we're doing the same dance that we did when we were one of the gods. So we are the gods, and we were these giant beings, and now we're coming down smaller and smaller. We probably even go down to a molecular level. And everything is happening simultaneously. And the archetypes that we identify with, that we take and own as our own, get acted out on all these levels, from the microscopic all the way to the to the God sort, you know, sense. And so, uh, so that's the macrocosm reflects the microcosm, and vice versa. So we're acting this all out. We're identifying with the. So I identify with the peacemaker, and so does my husband. And that becomes the force that leads your life. That you that you go through life. You walk through life as the archetype that you identify with. And that takes you outside of the matrix. So we're locked in this matrix. We think this is all real. And we get um, trapped by the parameters of the matrix and the shoulds. And we can do this. We can't do that. What we can and cannot do. But if we if we, we get our guiding myth is what um, was her name. She was a teacher from the 80s and 90s. She said, get your guiding myth. Um, if you get your guiding myth, that can take you and propel you outside of this this container, which is limiting, and, uh, you know, it, it has light and dark, and you can't go anywhere, right? So you go outside, identify with the archetype, but then you bring that into the container, the matrix, and then you expand the matrix, and you and you have this uh, system where you can, I'm good, I'm bad, I'm light, I'm dark, you know, whatever you identify, but you can create change, and then that creates the ascension process. I know it's kind of convoluted, but I hope you get some kind of sense out of that. I think it made it made good sense, and you know Joseph Campbell wrote about myths to live by, like they are myths are convey myths are a way to work out problems, to work out questions, and to find solutions that are shared in community. A myth is always a communal function, and. Um, and a lot of what we're we're talking about now, uh, like is it real? Isn't it real? About the UFO ET phenomena, is really just modern modern myths doing their process of um, finding answers to prob- to shared problems. So I think it's very important, and I think that the mythology is an is an incredibly important function that is not really well understood at the gut at the not gut, but the um, the different levels where we're at. Oh, say that again. What level? The the, diff, the different levels. You know, we're, we're all progressing at different levels, and so if incarnation can be involved in that is so we can all mature and grow to the level that we can understand the different levels that, that you're exactly you're mythology mythology mm-hmm. involved abstract is abstract reasoning right. and that's its value and the guys who believe that the world was created in seven days from sunrise to sunset to sunrise and seven sunrises are very much at the literal level. You see what I'm saying? It, they're not using abstract reasoning because that simply is not 
their evolutionary 